really, really interesting. A new input device for the iPad that is more than just a keyboard. It has multiple functions and is going to let you do a lot more, which is a very simple device that's not intrusive at all. Hello, my name is Skipen, and if you've been following my channel, you know that I'm an avid iPad user. As an artist, I think it's really a very powerful platform that can do a lot of things and it's very portable, which is great. But it's not always the professional tool that I want it to be. For that, I've done a few videos on the accessories that I use to make the iPad a little bit more productive, but I just got something in the mail today that is along those lines. And I wanted to do a video that was slightly different than I usually do. I wanted to try to do an unboxing. So let's check it out. So what I have right here is the Tap Strap 2 from Tap. It's a wearable keyboard that you put on your hand and you can kind of put different inputs based on uh, either gestures or hand movements. And I thought for artists, this would be great. You could put on your left or right hand, the opposite of your dominant hand, so you could still draw with one hand and do keyboard shortcuts with the other. The thing is I've used controllers like these before that have limited numbers of inputs. They're pretty good at letting me select my brushes, undo, redo, stuff like that, but they don't have the full swath of keyboard functions that you could have with something like tap. And then because I mainly deal with iOS, something like this, now you can bind a uh, controller to iOS, to iPads, but you can't really switch around the inputs. You can only do this with like games and stuff. So that's unfortunate. And sometimes you just don't want to carry around a full keyboard. They can be pretty big and cumbersome depending on what you're trying to do. If I just go out for a few minutes to a cafe and want to use the iPad mini 5 like I always do, the keyboard is just a bit too much. So let's go ahead and unbox the top strap too. So as we can see, pretty nice design here. The case is used for charging as well as portability, transportation. So it's pretty cool. And the whole point of this being that you're going to have a input device in your non-dominant hand and you're going to allow yourself to draw with your dominant hand without lifting up the pencil. You can continuously draw while putting in different inputs like undo, redo, zoom in, zoom out, stuff like that so that you can really be that much more productive. So let's go ahead and try this out. So I went with a larger size tap strap. There's a measurement guide on the website so that you can find whatever fits your hand size. Let's go ahead and try to pair it. As you can see right there, tap strap. There. there is no setup, all you do is pair it over Bluetooth and it's already working. So what's really nice is that Tap has made a couple of different apps that help you get used to typing in this way, and this is one of them. And as you can see, I'm just trying to learn the systems through Tap's app. Okay, so this is a little bit hard at the beginning, but I'm already getting used to it. So after practicing with Taps app, I'm pretty good at doing A, E, I, O, and U. And I think I'm gonna go into Clip Studio and see if I can bind those to something that's useful and see if we actually get a productivity boost by using this Tap Strap. So the easiest way to bind your tap gestures to Clip Studio would be to think about what you want each finger to represent. So now that I have everything set up, I'm gonna go into shortcut settings on Clip Studio. Let's replace brush with E. So now whenever I use my index finger, I'm gonna pull up my brush. For eraser, let's do middle finger I. So we'll just go ahead and open up a canvas here. If you see, I'm on the move tool right here, so I can just tap my index finger and bam, right there, I have a brush going. When I'm drawing, if I have to pick my pencil up, I'm kind of breaking the flow of things and it takes more time to get back into it. And even if that's just a millisecond or a few seconds or whatever, it still adds up in the end and your drawing is gonna take a little bit longer. So if I'm drawing like this and I can undo with the top strap or redo with the top strap, it's really, really efficient. One thing that you might want to um, think about is keeping those gestures relevant to what's on the iPad. That's going to really be an easy learning curve for someone just getting into the top strap. So this accessory is not something that's going to necessarily improve your drawing skills, but it's going to make you a lot faster and open up the iPad to do a lot more, especially on the go. I can imagine going to a cafe like I've done with one of these things and sitting there for two hours and getting an actual illustration done versus you, know, you might not be able to actually finish something if you don't have this extra little keyboard or accessory to make that productivity that much better. 
So this is pretty cool. Another function of the tap strap is that it can also double as a mouse. And now iPad OS has an assistive touch feature that lets you kind of simulate a mouse. And as you can see right here on my iPad, I have this little floating cursor and it's being controlled by the tap strap. It's very easy to move around. There's like a little optical piece here. So you just hover over what you want and you give it a tap with your index finger. Functions like this are really, really nice, especially if you don't want to use an Apple Pencil for some reason. Maybe you want some more accuracy and you can go from typing on a note and then going to a mouse function and maybe highlighting something that's really, really interesting and a new input device for the iPad that is more than just the keyboard. It has multiple functions and is going to let you do a lot more with just a very simple device that's not intrusive at all. I think one thing that you have to remember about iOS is that it's still a pretty closed platform. And even though now it does accept like gaming controllers, that things like this, when you pair them to an iPad, it's pretty much restricted to games. I wish that you could use these in Clip Studio Paint or Procreate, but you're not able to rebind any of these functions. And in fact, for the most part, when you do connect these controllers over Bluetooth to an iPad and you open up a program like Clip Studio Paint and you press a button, nothing happens. So your best bet is to go with something like Tapstrap or one of these controllers that act like keyboards when paired over Bluetooth. That's gonna give you the most functionality and the most customizability. So the Tapstrap 2 seems like it might be a perfect pair to the iPad. It's very small, very light, very slim, which is kind of what you expect from an iPad. You want it to be portable, small, light, and very powerful. I think this might be an interesting pair to take with me on the go. I wanna definitely test that out. I'm very thorough with my reviews. I spent a lot of time testing a product, trying to find tips and tricks to really inform everybody on what these devices can do. So if you're interested in a video like that, please subscribe and let me know in the comments. This Tapstrap 2 is a really, really interesting new technology. I've never seen anything like it, and I think that it could really improve my productivity, but we'll have to see in that full review video. I'm Skipen, and thank you so much for watching.